Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. One of the biggest in the United States. It spreads out in all four directions like a broad loom rug. To the south and west, it's the downtown business district. To the east, the industrial area. Los Angeles, California. It's pretty much like your town. This is a Spanish priest, one of the city's founders. It's changed a lot since then. It's got high tension wires bringing in the power and bus lines to get you where you're going. It's got railroads and freight yards. Churches, any kind you want. public parks and lakes. It's got a police department. And a city hall. This is where I work. I'm a cop. It was Thursday, July 17th. It was sultry in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Ed Jacobs. The boss is Captain Didion. My name's Friday. It was 1.35 p.m. when we got back to the city hall. Nine months before, a jewelry salesman was slugged and robbed of $20,000 in precious stones. It took us weeks of investigation before we discovered the man responsible for the holdup. It took more weeks of legwork to gather all the evidence. We needed one more thing. His statement. <laughs> Call a captain, he said he'd be in the corner pocket. Yeah, right. I'd still like to know what this is all about, Sergeant, dragging me down here oh, in the captain, middle of the day. Captain, did he have a minute, Yeah, thanks. Hi, Skipper, this is Jacobs. We just got back. Yeah. All of them? Good. Right, we're in your office. Yeah, thanks. The others check in, all right? Yeah, I just got back. Worked out fine. Would you please explain what this is about? Why have you brought me down here? We think you know why. I don't. I haven't any idea. You take me away from my store on a busy day, you put a police guard on it, you insist on bringing me down here, what's it all about? Now tell me. You tell us, Mr. Garvey. Hmm? Tell you about what? The jewel robbery nine months ago, the holdup. What holdup? My store hasn't been robbed. We're talking about your friend, Thomas Ashley. Ashley? What about him? We think you remember it nine months ago, the parking lot back of the building down on 4th Street. Oh, yes, surely. Some holdup man slugged him, stole his case of samples. I remember it now, yeah. Poor Tom. The thief made a big haul, didn't he? Unset diamonds. $20,000 worth. Yeah, I remember it now. I don't think Tom's gotten over it yet. I was a jewelry salesman for the same company at the time. You know, the same company Tom was working for, I mean. Yeah, we know. Some of the big bosses thought Tom had a hand in it. They figured it was a put-up job. Nothing was further from the truth. That's so? Of course, I know Tom. Close friend of mine. He wouldn't be mixed up in a deal like that. Tom and I worked out of the same office for years. We've had him over to the house for dinner. We've even been on vacations together. One of the most honest men I know. You're sure about that, are you? Of course I'm sure. Say, that isn't why you called me down here, is it? You don't think Tom had anything to do with that robbery, do you? You don't think he was in on it? He had nothing to do with it. Think you know that as well as we do. Then why am I here? There's nothing I can tell you about the holdup, only what I heard from Tom, what I read in the newspapers. Now, you can tell us a lot more, Garvey. We didn't bring you down here just to pass the time of day. Tom was slugged and his sample case of stones was taken. That's all I can tell you. You're a liar, mister. What? You engineered the whole thing. We know it, and so do you. Is this some kind of a joke? If it is, I think it's in bad taste. It's a long way from a joke, Garvey. You planned the job, you got the loot. We can give you chapter and verse. I really think you're serious. You think I robbed Tom? We got it past the thinking stage, Garvey. We already told you. We know you robbed him. Now, wait a minute. This thing's ridiculous. The whole idea is ridiculous. I don't know who gave you the so-called information on me, but it's wrong. Nothing further from the truth. Nobody gave us the information. We got it ourselves. You're really serious, are you? I robbed Tom, and you can prove I did. You're getting the idea. I don't know what to say. It's fantastic. I robbed my best friend, Tom Ashley, nine months ago. I have $20,000 worth of diamonds, and you can prove it. Every bit of it. What about it? I think you're out of your mind. My name is Ernest George Garvey. Are you sure I'm the man you want? There couldn't be a mistake. There's no mistake. This thing would be funny if I didn't think you were serious. 
Let me ask you just one question. Maybe that'll clear it up for you. Yeah. If I held up Tom Ashley, how is it he didn't recognize me? You know better than that, Garvey. What? You didn't hold up Tom Ashley yourself. You had someone do it for you. Oh, cloak and dagger, huh? I'm afraid this is getting a little too wild for me, Sergeant. Maybe you can waste your time making ridiculous charges. I can't. I'm going back to my store. It's a weak bluff, mister. It's not going to do it. Excuse me. Are you sure you two men haven't been drinking? Sit down, Garvey. I told you. I'm going back to my store. Sit down. You have no right to keep me here. Ridiculous charges. You think I'm one of those cheap hoodlums you're used to dealing with? Now, come off it, mister. You've got a $5,000 car and a $40,000 home. That doesn't rate you a special treatment. You're a thief. You know it as well as we do. I don't have to take this from you. You haven't got much choice, mister. We just finished five months' legwork proving it. Proving what? Sit down. You engineered that holdup. We know who you got to do it. We know how it was carried out. We know how you planned on disposing of the diamonds. We know who your fence was. We know what the split was. We know what you did with part of the money. We know how much you got left. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. What can I say? I don't even know what you're talking about. Any way you want it, Mr. Garvey. Maybe you'd like to tell me why I did all this. You know it better than we do. No, I mean it. Tell me. You weren't making enough money at your job to suit yourself, suit your wife either. It's pretty good, Marilyn. Get a big kick out of that. All right, mister. We can wait it out as long as you want. We spent nine months on it already. Another few days aren't going to make that much difference. Just as a matter of curiosity, how'd you first start off on this tangent? Whatever gave you an idea that I had anything to do with the holdup? When you started to spend money, new car, new office for yourself, new fur coat for your wife, transferred your two children to that private school. That makes a holdup man out of me because I wanted to send my kids to a better school? Where'd the money come from? Can you explain that? Don't you think that's my business, Sergeant? Where I get my money, what I do with it? Not when you get it stealing. I'm afraid you're going just a little too far. You insist I'm a thief, I'm going to insist you prove it. All right, have a look over over here, Mr. Garvey. Yes? Some of the reports in the investigation, reams of them. They cover everything from the time of the jewel robbery up to late yesterday. Now, it's all right there. Everything from the crime report to signed statements. How could that concern me? Three quarters of the stuff concerns you. Have a look for yourself. I still can't get it straight in my mind. What makes you think I had anything to do with that robbery? Do you know what this is, Garvey, this machine here? No, some kind of recording apparatus. That's right, it's a tape recorder. You've been taking down this conversation. Why? No, not this one. We've been recording every conversation that took place in your office for the past four months. Every word. What do you mean? Just that, Garvey. Every time you talked on the phone, every visitor you had, it's all down on tape. Twenty-five reels of it. Interesting. Is that supposed to frighten me? We don't care if it frightens you or not. Something else. Yes? Reports on what you've been doing for the last four months. Daily reports. Every movement you made. Is that so? Everywhere you went. Everyone you talked to. Everything you did. You like to hear a sample? This must be some kind of a joke. That's the only explanation I can think of. May 12th, Thursday. Sergeants Bitteroff and Rafferty. Those are the two officers who were tailing you at the time. You checked in at your new office at 9.38 a.m. At 10.03 a.m. you had a visitor, a Kenneth Tyson. You talked to him in your office. The conversation's recorded. Tyson left at 10.18 a.m. At 10.32 a.m. you left your office. If you're trying to impress me, I'm afraid it isn't working out very well. Care for a cigarette, Garvey? No, thanks. I have my own. All right. I've wasted enough time. Exactly what's the point of all this? It's pretty simple. You're responsible for a robbery. We can prove it. We're giving you a chance to make a statement. It's nonsense. Is it? Of course. People following me, checking everything I do, where I spend my money, where I send my kids to school. What's it all about? It doesn't make sense. Okay, Garvey, we've said it before. We can wait it out as long as you want. Look, let's get this thing straight. Let's go back to the beginning and take it step by step. Okay, fine. The holdup was last fall, wasn't it? Sometime in October? October 7th, Monday, 5.20 in the afternoon. All right, now just what am I supposed to have done? None of your vague references about a new coat for my wife or where I send my kids to school. Let's have some facts. Joe? All right, Garvey. You went to work as a jewelry salesman for the company ten years ago. Your friend Tom Ashley, the victim, started the same year. The two of you have been pretty close friends. That's right. I told you that. We'll skip the rest of your background for now. Two weeks before the robbery on September 24th, you had a meeting with a Kenneth Tyson. You met him in a cafeteria on South Broadway. Tyson's 19 years old. He lives with an older sister. He works in a gas station on Olympic Boulevard. He's done some work in your car for you. That's how you happen to know him. Yes, I think I remember the boy. I don't know him well, though. I don't recall the meeting, either. You know the boy very well. At the time of the meeting, you promised him $1,000 if he'd hold up your friend Tom Ashley. Ridiculous. Tyson agreed to it, and you briefed him on the plan. The following day, you gave him a gun, a 32 caliber Smith & Wesson, serial number 362744. Nonsense. Where did you get that information? Tyson. He's lying. Believe me, if he told you that, he's lying. Is he the one who robbed Tom? October 7th, at your direction, he was in the parking lot behind the Hunter Crosswell building. Tom Ashley came out to get in his car. He had a case of sample diamonds with him. Tyson held him up, slugged him, took the stones, and got away. Of course, it's obvious. Tyson's trying to say I put him up to it. He's trying to get out of it that way. I'm afraid not, Garvey. The boy couldn't have carried off the holdup by himself. Of course he could. It's obvious. He's trying to cover up. There were six people in the company you worked for who knew that on Mondays, Ashley always took the case of sample diamonds along when he made his calls. 
Only on Mondays. You were one of the people who knew that. I suppose you've considered the other five people? They were all checked out at the time. They were all cleared. You along with them. Well, I'm not clear anymore, is that it? This young hoodlum Tyson, you're willing to take his word over mine. After the robbery took the case of diamonds to you, that was the next day. You paid him $500 and promised him the other $500 when you got rid of the stone. Oh, I suppose I've gotten rid of them, or do I still have them? Which? Two months after the holdup, you contacted a fence up in San Francisco. You drove up there and sold him some of the stones. He broke them up, and then he sold them. We know who he sold them to. We know what he got for him. This fence, he's supposed to be another good friend of mine? You're still doing business with him. His name's Fred Lawrence. It's a new one on me. I don't know any Fred Lawrence. Can't even recall the name. Maybe this will help you, Garvey. Listen to him on the tape recorder. What's all this about? Phone conversation, Garvey. One of the things we recorded from your office. Let's see, this one was on March 18th. I always thought wiretapping was against the law, or do you pay any attention to that? We didn't tap your telephone line. We recorded everything from dictographs we installed in your store and back in your office. They started recording the day you moved in. That was March the 1st, wasn't it? I don't know why you're telling me. I can sue you for that, you know. I can sue you for your last dollar. All we're concerned with right now is Fred Lawrence. You say you don't know him. I'd like to have you listen to this. Recorded March 18th in your office. All right? Yeah, Mary. Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, sure. Put him on. Hi, Fred. How are you? Not so. Good. Mm -hmm. No, everything's fine. No heat at all. No, look. Tyson's all right. Believe me, he's a good kid. Right? Yeah, all right. Where? Well, I don't know. It might not be so good if you're seen coming here. Oh, 8 o'clock, 8.30. Okay, fine. It's close to 8.30 as you can make it, huh? Right, friend. Good night. You recognize that, Garvey? Garvey? I understand they can do clever things with tape recorders nowadays. There's a way of piecing words together, isn't there? They can record your voice and then fix the tape, take a simple sentence and change the words around to mean just the opposite. You can examine the tape if you like. We didn't make a splice in it. All you'll find in it are the usual factory splices, just the way it came from the manufacturer. What difference does it make anyway? Nothing criminal about that conversation, nothing at all. You told us a few minutes ago you didn't know Fred Lawrence. You never heard of him. On that recording, sounds like you know him pretty well. It's a fairly common name, wouldn't you say? Must be quite a few Fred Lawrences. I didn't happen to remember the name right off. How about Tyson? What? Tyson. You told us you didn't know him well at all. I don't. Didn't sound that way on the tape. You were telling Lawrence he was all right. You said, believe me, he's a good kid. How about it, mister? How about what? Is this some kind of a frame? What are you trying to make me say? We're not going to make you say anything, Garvey. We work robbery detail. That's the job, robberies. They pay us to clean them up. I can pay you. What? Never mind. I didn't mean that. I meant I pay my taxes. I pay your salaries. I help to anyway. I don't know why I have to be treated like this. No reason to make a big headache out of this for everybody, Garvey. You engineered a holdup, and we can prove it. We're giving you a chance to make a statement. That's all. I've got nothing to say. Make a statement about what? All you're going on is hearsay, circumstantial evidence. You can't say I planned that robbery. You admit you know Tyson. You know him well. I don't. I admit nothing. What about the phone conversation? It's a fake. They phony those things up all the time. You know it as well as I do. You admitted you know Fred Lawrence. We proved that on the recording. I admit nothing. You don't even know Tyson. Is that what you want to say? I know him. That's all. He worked on my car a couple of times. I don't know him well. I'd like to play you another recording, Garvey. A waste of time. I haven't got the whole day to spend here. I've got to get back to my store. I've got a business to operate. Won't take very long. Here we are. April 5th. A lot of foolishness anyway. How do I know how you made those recordings? You could have gotten actors, made them up yourselves. There weren't any dictographs. How did you make those things? There were dictographs, Carvey. You remember before you moved in that new suite of offices, you had them redecorated? Yes. There were sound technicians from our crime lab out there working side by side with the painters, carpenters. They installed dictographs in your store, back in your offices. They bugged the entire place. Wiretapping. I'll bring this into court if it's the last thing I do. We already told you, Garvey, it's not wiretapping. We didn't touch your phone lines. We didn't have to. Invasion of privacy. I'm going to bring this into court. All right, let's hear this recording. It might clear up a few things, huh? Clear up what? What are you trying to prove? Okay, Joe. Yeah, okay. Date on this is April 5th. Just like I told you the last time, Ken. I'm sending this stuff north. I hope to hear in a couple of days. 
Yeah, I know. That's what you told me before. It was a pretty heavy job. I could use the money. I mean, if it wasn't so heavy, I wouldn't mind. But, well, I got it coming, I think. Of course you do, Ken. There's no question there. It's just that I haven't got it right now. Believe me, you'd have it in a minute if it was mine to give. Yeah, but that was the agreement, wasn't it? 500 before the job, 500 after. Happened last October. That's How about it, Garvey? What do you say? Ridiculous, that's all. Obvious fake. You can look at the tape if you like, inspect it. You can check every one of those 25 reels. We'll play them for you if you want. Fakes, bad ones at that. Now look, I'll give you both a chance. Either you book me in on a charge or else release me. You try booking me in and I'll sue you for false arrest. I'll break you. I'll sue you blind. I promise you that. Yeah. Release me and I'll get back to work. I'll forget all about it. Now you name it, which one? Book me in or release me? That's fair enough. You're giving us a choice. You bet it's fair. You could get in a lot of hot water. Now it's up to you. Which one? You ran a bad bluff, mister. What? We're booking you in. Thursday, 3.55 p.m., Ed Jacobs and I continued questioning the robbery suspect, Ernest Garvey. Despite the evidence at hand, he still refused to admit any knowledge of the $20,000 jewel theft nine months before. The questioning went on. Garvey's answers became more and more confused. We kept pressing laying out the case against him step by step. 4.30 p.m. We stayed at it. But it must have taken quite a bit of money, didn't it, Garvey? Your wife's new fur coat, new car for yourself. Where'd it come from? Now, look, there has to be an answer. Where'd that money come from? Simple. I borrowed it. Where'd you borrow it? Some of it from friends, some from the banks. I don't see how it concerns you. How much money did you borrow? Don't you think that's my business? Wasn't it about $7,000? Is that about right? Yes. No, it was more. What's the difference? It's my business. Complete financial file on you, Garvey. Took us quite a few weeks getting it together. A lot of work. You must like snooping in other people's affairs. No, not especially. It's pretty dull. Here's a copy of your bank statement from the California banks. Photostat. Doesn't make much sense here. What do you mean? Well, we checked your income for that month. Amounted to $620.18. Now, how is that possible? For your information, I made a loan that month. That's probably some of the loan money I deposited. I'd quit my old job that time. I was going in business for myself. I needed the money to redecorate the new store, the office. It's as simple as that. Mm. Photo statue your loan papers right here. The loan was for $2,000. Yes. The month before, February, you borrowed from another bank. Let's see. That was for $3,000. Made another one in April, too. That was for 1500 Different bank again. Yes, that's right. Do we have to go over this line by line? In three months, you made bank loans for $6,500. Now, besides that, in the same three months, you earned a total of $1,713.88. Now, together, that makes $8,213.88. What's the point? Copies of your bank statements, Garvey. You have five different savings accounts in five different banks. How do you explain that? Garvey, any explanation? Almost 5 o'clock. Can I use the phone? I have to call my wife to let her know. All right. You'll have to listen in on the extension. The conversation will be monitored. Go ahead. I don't care. Okay. You dial 9 to get an outside line. Oh, yeah. Busy. Stats there if you want to examine them, Garvey. I see them. Well, you want to give us an explanation? You only had $8,200. How could you bank $11,000? It had to come from somewhere. Purely a personal matter, that's all. I borrowed $3,000 from a brother of mine, lives back in Minnesota. You'd already made three loans. Why'd you have to borrow from your brother? You mind telling us? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do mind. Well, it still doesn't balance the books, Garvey. You earned and borrowed $8,200. You got another $3,000 from your brother, you say. That's $11,200. You banked $11,000. Yes, that's right. You always have to repeat. That'd leave you with $200. Did you and your family live for three months on $200? Why not? That could easily be. A lot of people do it. Yes, sir, but not your family. I'm getting sick and tired of this. You trying to tell me you know my family better than I do, what they eat, what they spend, what it takes to support them? We've been on this thing for nine months, Garvey. We'll put in a lot of hours, and we know your family pretty well. If you like, I'll tell you the last time you ordered steak from the meat market when you paid your gas bill, the last time your wife bought a pair of shoes. I guess this is standard procedure for you, threatening people? We're not threatening you, Garvey. We're giving you facts. Another file here. It took us over a month to get this one together. Complete record of your expenses from February 1st. Covers February, March, April, May, and June. I hope the police department has a good lawyer, Sergeant. You've got fair warning. I'm going to sue you for your last dollar. Now, you say you and your family lived three months on $200. That doesn't jibe with what we've got. You can take a look here if you want to. It's all there. Lies, forgeries, it's all lies. I promise you're going to regret this. There's a photostat here of the receipt for your wife's coat, Garvey. $1,612.34. That includes the tax paid in full. 
photostat of the contract for your new car. Down payment, $2,000. Liquor bill for the big party you threw in March, March 20th. Liquor bill, $387. There's a catering bill here, 194 Full year's check for tuition, room, and board for your kids at that private school you sent them to. $1,864.07. That's only the beginning, Garvey. Comes to a lot more than $200. Have you heard enough? I better try to get my wife again. I have to let her know. All right, Ed, you want to get the extension? Yeah, right. You dial nine to get outside, Garvey. Yeah, I know. Still talking. She might know I'm trying to get her, stupid. Now, wait a couple of minutes. You'll get through. Gabbing on the phone all day long. Gab on the phone and play cards. It's all she ever does. I've got some more figures for you here, Garvey. Be a good idea if you hear them. Bills for two more parties you threw last month. Food bills, liquor bills. Why do you have to keep pushing that stuff at me? So you've been sneaking around finding out about my personal affairs. That's supposed to be good police work, is it? This is the kind of thing they pay you for? Now look, you carried off a robbery, Garvey. We're giving you a chance to make a statement. Why should I? What for? Give you a statement and have you twist it around? Incriminate me? I haven't had anything to do with this kid, Tyson. Better make that call. Down on first. I know, I know. You told me. wrong, Garvey. What's the matter with her, stupid? She ought to know I'm trying to get her, stupid. Down on. I know. One more recording you ought to hear. Just played part of it for you. I don't want to hear it. I'll play just a piece of it. Think you ought to hear it. Not the one from May 10th, is that it? Yeah, uh-huh. Tyson and Garvey. Same place. The office. Hey, I'll have to tell me on the phone. Should you have the door for me today? Now, wait a minute, Tyson. I didn't say that at all. I said maybe I'd have it for you. I didn't say definitely. Look, I can't give you what I haven't got. I want the 500, Garvey. I need it. I stuck my neck out on a robbery job. I'd get five to life if the cops got me. You'd be clear. Now, take it easy, will you, Ken? Take it easy, nothing. Well, it couldn't be any plainer. What do you say? In a minute, just a minute. She was never satisfied. She never could be satisfied. Always more. She always had to have something else. How do you mean, your wife? Playing cards and gabbing on the phone, that's all. She kept writing me day in and day out. I wasn't making enough money. She didn't have any clothes. The kids ought to go to a better school. We ought to have a new house. On and on and on. I ought to go in business for myself, make money, lots of money, same thing all the time. Talk, talk, talk. There's only so much you can take. You figured the robbery had solved the problem, is that it? I guess so. I'd have tried anything just to shut her up, get her off my back for a while. I guess you got Tyson, huh? The other man, too. Fred Lawrence. They were picked up this afternoon. Lawrence at the airport. Tyson and a show downtown. All three of you. What about your wife, Garvey? She know you planned the robbery? I didn't tell her. I think she knows, though. Pretty sure she does. Maybe she'll be satisfied now. Lousy money. She had to have it. Didn't even leave me enough to pay off that kid Tyson. Private school for the children. Wall-to-wall -wall carpets in the house. New dishwasher. New coat. New car. Everything. She just had to have him. You want to take me? Book me in? I don't care. All right. We'll stop off down the hall, take your statement. Sure, I don't care. All right, let's go. Oh, say, just a minute, huh? Yeah? It'll only take a minute. November 4th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 87, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. The 
suspect was tried and convicted of robbery in the first degree, which is punishable by imprisonment from five years to life. Uh -huh.